This is Uncle from TacticalGamer.com and this is tutorial 3 in the Arma 3 editor series. Uh, this one I'm going to uh, continue on from lesson 2. We're going to delete the waypoints we've created so far. What we're going to do in this tutorial is talk about how we can do some simple triggers to uh, create events in the mission uh, and we're going to blow up a helicopter uh, as an objective to complete a mission. So in order to do this first thing I'm going to do is create a trigger that will give us a good demonstration of what we can do the trigger. First of all I'm going to make a rectangle trigger. I'm going to make it uh, 100 meters by 15 meters. I'm going to set it to be activated by blue 4 being present, which I can select there, and I'm going to ask it to select it to do this only once. If you ask it to do it repeatedly, anytime Blue 4 is in this area that I'm going to create, an area trigger, then it's going to fire uh, any kind of whatever condition I put down here. Uh, but I only want to do it once. I want the condition to be this. Well, this means that all of this stuff that I selected up here is true. I can make different conditions and not have to use any of this. This is just really handy. So, any, once Blue 4 is present within this zone, on the activation, I want to hint the pop up on the screen. That's the text that shows up in the top right with a ding. Um, and it's going to say, uh, you have, you are close to the objective. Okay, so I can put that right in front of the Blue 4 forces. As soon as a Blue 4 force or a unit crawls into that area, then the players are going to get that hint. Alright, so what I need to do now is also create our objective. I'm going to create a unit by selecting the Unit tool, double click, and I'm going to make an empty unit. And the class is going to be uh, Air. Unit is going to be an orca, and I need to name it in order to know what object it is. So I'm going to give it the name target one, uh, which I'm going to refer to in another trigger. So I'm going to create another trigger, pop it down, and it doesn't have to have uh, an area. This one's just going to detect whether or not this target one is alive. Um, and it's actually going to detect that it's not alive. Uh, so I'm not going to use any of these uh, conditions that are here. So I'm going to delete this out of the condition box so it doesn't use that stuff. I'm going to say the exclamation mark before the word alive. Ah, boy. Means not alive. Not alive target one. So as soon as target one, that helicopter is not alive, it's going to create this. It's going to say give us an effect to complete the mission. Um, effects type of text that will show up in the middle of the screen. Target. Let's give us a little music. Okay. I've got two triggers to try and actually I'm going to need someone with some explosives here to play this. So I'm going to take one of my riflemen and turn them into an explosive specialist. And that's the one I'll play. Okay, preview, here we go. Play as the explosive specialist. And in we go. All the units will line up behind the leader in formation now. So one of the units may follow me, or two, because they follow the unit in front of them. I've just completed the first trigger. It says you are close to the objective. I forgot this is an Arma 3 doesn't show up with that ding. Alright, now I'm simply going to plant my explosive charge. Get the heck out of dodge. Bring my buddy with me. 
Now when I complete this, I should have some text pop up on the screen and the music should start. We have completed our objective. Touch off. Alright, let's get back into the editor and make this a little more complex because the mission's not going to end. It's just going to sit there until the music ends and wait around for us to do a bunch of other stuff, which we're not going to do. If we haven't programmed anything else, let's get back to the editor, we continue and back, and then the last mission we were working on is selected. I hit edit. Now, what I want this to do is to have uh, the music come up and the 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 uh, actually the better way to demonstrate this is just make this an end trigger first. So once that happens, I'm going to make this into a type of an end trigger. And just to make sure the end happens, I'm going to put force end. So what happens is the condition is reached and on activation whatever you put in here as code will execute and then when that's done when the death trigger is now dead it will f do whatever code you put in here I could put this up here I could go control C control V put it up there no problem do the same thing for me okay let's do this real quick I'm gonna take my explosive specialist I'm gonna place him right beside the helicopter to make this go quick let's preview it and see the difference Notice it doesn't matter which way I go into this trigger zone, it's going to fire that uh, I am close to the objective. Now I'm going to touch up the bomb, and the mission completed, but it didn't display the text on the screen or start the music or give me time to know whether or not I won or I lost. If the condition is, you know, one team versus another and it ends like that, no one's going to know what was the end, and everyone's, a lot of people are going to think that there was a bug in the mission. So, how do we make it gives some time before it completes the mission. Well, what I'm going to do is change this to not be an end trigger anymore. And I'm going to use the variable to do this. It's no longer an end trigger. What I'm going to do is create oops, a new trigger that I want to fire at the beginning of the mission. So I'm going to give it an area of 1. Um, it's going to be activated by an independent force which is not present in that circle, which is very easy to have happen in a 1 meter circle. No one will be there. So this condition will be true as soon as the mission starts and as soon as it is I'm going to say public or I'm going to say uh, mission complete and I'm just making this variable name up uh, as equal to false. So the mission is not yet complete. Now I need to broadcast the value of this variable to all the other computers that are connected to the server, all the other people playing, so that they, all their computers think that the mission is not complete. So I say public variable mission complete. That's step one. You see that that circle is very small, no independence will be in there, and the trigger will fire immediately. Then, when the helicopter is blown up, this trigger will fire. It'll start playing the music that's in the effects and destroy the display the text. Uh, and I'm going to now then change the value of mission complete, that variable. It's now equal to true. Alright, now I'm going to create one more trigger, and this one doesn't need to have any area whatsoever. It's a zero. Okay, the condition is none of that. It is that mission complete is equal to, and you have to use two equal signs because otherwise I'm saying 
I'm assigning a value to what mission complete is, and when I use two equal signs, I'm asking what is the value. Mission complete is, is mission complete equal to true? Then fire this trigger. If that is true, then go on to force end. And the type will be end. I can take this trigger, make it an ellipse, give it a radius of 20 meters, put it around my helicopter so it actually makes more sense. All right, put my guy just a little ways out, and let's preview that. I forgot one very important thing before I went into that, and that is that last trigger that forces the end, I need to use the timer part of the trigger. I'm going to put a timer of 20 seconds on it. Okay, again, you can use these different values a minimum value, a maximum value, and a mid range to skew a random timer so you can introduce uh, randomness or the effect of. Uh, the appearance of intelligence into your missions. Um, so there we go. Now it's going to actually wait. What's when the mission complete is now equal to true? It's going to wait 20 seconds before it completes the mission. Just let's go down the chain real quick. I got one trigger that sets mission complete as false. Another trigger that is going to fire when the helicopter is blown up, and it says that the variable mission complete is now equal to true. When that happens, it fires this trigger which doesn't actually do the activation part of it till 20 seconds after and then it'll close off the mission. There's trigger fired, I'm close to the objective. That trigger was set to fire only once, uh, which we can test as well, as long as I give it enough time for that to go away. Notice these guys didn't follow me, and that when they spawned in, they went into a formation based on their proximity. So, whereas when I was spawned in there with them, they followed me, last guy in the line behind me followed me no matter what. Very smart in the AI. So now I can touch off the bomb. I got the music. And I can move back into that trigger zone around the helicopter. And it's not going to fire it again because it's only going to do it once. And then about 20 seconds into it, later, I'm going to have the mission complete. This is Uncle from TacticalGamer.com. And this was mi the Arma 3 uh, editor tutorial for... Uh, using some more advanced stuff with triggers and uh, completing objectives.